Welcome to lesson number two. In this lesson, you're going to be learning about the various parts of a drum set as well as drum set notation. There are two learning goals for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should know what all the parts of a standard drum set are called, how they sound, and how they work as well. And then the second learning goal is knowing standard drum set notation. Um, so I get a lot of questions on how do you read drum set music? Do you still use a, like a treble clef or a staff or anything like that? And by the end of this lesson, you will understand the basics of how to read uh, a drum beat. All right, so for the first part of this video, let's head over to the drum set and I will show you and describe all the parts of the drum set. The very first piece is the drum throne. I have two types here. Uh, this one, cheaper, you raise it by spinning it. I want to tighten that. Spinning it left raises it up, spinning it right lowers it down. This is a more expensive drum throne. It's a rock and sock, great brand, and it has a lever. So you raise it up by the lever, sit on it, and if you weigh enough, you can lower it. Piece number two, the snare drum and the snare stand. So the snare stand, which is going to be the way it works for all hardware, lefty loosey, righty tighty, you loosen those lugs and then you can, this is always tricky, collapse it or open it up, tighten it back up. It has a height adjustment, same thing, loosen it, raise it or lower it. And this nifty little thing, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, not there yet. You can change the angle of the snare drum. I like mine as flat as possible. And then this little thing under here, as you spin it, it's gonna close the claw or open it more depending on the size of your snare drum. So you set that down, take your snare drum, set it on top. Mine is a 14 inch snare drum. It's the most common size of snare drum you're gonna find. Um, I make sure that, the, that it's resting on the rubber. So if it's resting on the metal at all, that's not a good thing. Make sure it's resting on the rubber and then uh, you can turn the snares off or turn them on. And you simply do that by a lever on all the snare drums. If you have a cheap snare drum, some of them are really tricky and broken, so it's hard to manage that lever. But what it's doing is it's releasing the snares, these are the snares, from contact with the head. And then when you push the lever on, it brings them up against the head so that when you play them, it vibrates the snares. Piece number three, the hi-hat or hi-hats. There are two of them. You will almost always have a heavier one and a lighter one. The heavier one goes on bottom. Oftentimes it will say bottom hi-hat. You place that on like so. And then, uh, by the way, this is the most complex contraption in the entire set. Uh, and then the top one, you have to connect See how this has a felt? I put the symbol on, I put another felt on, and I attach it, like so. Make sure it's, I like mine nice and tight, so that there's not a ton of wobble. Some drummers like the wobble, but I don't. Okay, that's secure as it is. Then you put that on like so, <clears throat> and now, when you tighten this lug here, it's going to attach to the rod. So you can either lift the cymbal up at the height that you like and just attach it, or a cool trick is if you push down with your foot, I don't know if you can see that, if you push down with your foot, it's going down here at to the height you like it, and then you just tighten it when you let go. Okay, that didn't work. When you let go, it'll go to the height you like. A couple other things about the hi-hat since it's the most complex. This little rod spins. It's, um, it can come, I, don't know, I can't do it right now, but it can come out. And so if you feel like it's not connected to the pedal down there, you just need to turn it righty-tighty until it secures itself to the pedal and is controlled, like so. So if you can pull up and it comes out, that's not a good thing. Uh, other than that, Make sure you have a felt down here for that lower cymbal. Um, you can adjust the angle of that lower cymbal always uh, right here. And what that does 
is cause it so that you don't get a vacuum so that they're perfectly level, but you get it, this is exaggerated, but you get it at an angle like so, so when it comes in, it makes more of a snapping sound. That's what that controls right there. You can adjust the height of the hi-hat right there. And then the pedal, the one last thing I'm gonna say about this, uh, sometimes I see pedals where this is not attached. It's sitting there, it's, it'll still kind of function, but it doesn't work as well. So make sure you put those in the correct spot. And that is the hi-hat. Next up, bass drum. Two things to say about the bass drum. One is the pedal. Notice this little device here. You want to hook the shell of the drum in there and then you're, I'm going to tighten this so that it brings that down and it is secure to the drum. Hopefully you can see this. I'm putting it on right there. I'm gonna tighten it and it is secure. Different beaters will produce slightly different timbres out of that bass drum. The second thing is these guys right here. So you see how they rotate? If you loosen that there, that will determine the angle of the bass drum, the height. Um, that's good for me. And so you just tighten both. I like to have my bass drum such that it is not actually resting on the ground there. Um, and so I adjust the legs and stuff to perfectly account for that. Uh, finally, you can spin these things and you'll see there's a little sharp point there, metal that will come out. That'll give you more grip if you're on like a carpet or something like this. Conversely, if you're not on carpet and those are out, they will really scratch up a floor. <laughs> so be aware of that. Next thing you have are rack toms. And you can have various setups here. This one is mounted directly to the bass drum. Some people think it affects the sound. I don't like how you can't adjust it. But anyway, it goes in like such. Whoa. And then you can adjust the angle of them like so. Like I said, you can't move them forward or back very much, which is why I don't like the mounted system to the bass drum. But that's what this guy has. Uh, and then notice you can have, this is one tom, you can have two toms. So uh, as you'll see in the notation in just a moment, we'll have a high tom, m medium tom, and a floor tom. The floor tom sits on the floor. And uh, you can adjust its height by adjusting these here. You can also take them out completely for travel. I like to have um, my floor tom pretty close to flat, but slightly angled towards me, like so. Next would be the crash cymbal. And here's a nice notorious little thing about cymbals. Um, here's the cymbal. On every cymbal stand, there, it's like there's little elves or gremlins that run around and steal the sleeves and the felt pads so the cymbal ends up resting right on the metal and that's not good for the cymbal. So um, I carry around a pack with me of extra felts and sleeves so that when you place the cymbal on, it is not directly touching any metal because that metal upon metal is not good. It's resting on the felt, it has the sleeve, and then I'm putting another felt on top and tightening that. And our final piece, the ride cymbal. It's going to be just the same as the crash cymbal, but larger, has a slightly different sound. Notice it's not a boom stand because um, I like to be able to get it at a, a certain angle that I can't get to if it doesn't have a boom. This is the boom there. You can adjust its angle and its distance. Okay, let's listen to each of these so you can hear how they sound. The snare drum with the snares off. Sounds like a tom, but pitched higher. Turn the snares on with the lever. We have a snare drum. The hi-hat. So closed. A little bit open so it sizzles. And then completely open. 
Also, you can make a sound with it with your foot. The bass drum. Floor tom. High tom. And again, a lot of rock drummers are going to use a middle tom right there or medium pitch tom. Uh, I have it, but I don't set it up that way just because I play more jazz than rock. And so this is more of a jazz setup. Crash cymbal. Generally, you want to hit with the shoulder of the stick, but you could hit with the tip. It's the bell of the crash cymbal and the ride. Notice how it's a little more pingy. The bell of the ride. That is the basic setup of a drum set. And now you hopefully have an understanding of how these instruments sound, function, and how you can set them up. Now for the second part of the video, we're going to look at how those drum parts are notated so that you can eventually read beats. The general rule is when you're studying out of a resource, usually that resource gives you a key at the beginning or a diagram showing you how they're going to notate the various parts of the drum set on a staff. So I've got two examples here. The first example I have here is Tommy Igo's Groove Essentials book. And you can see he says cymbals are notated this way, drums are this way, cowbells this way, and there's either a different note head or they're placed on the staff differently. So then as you're going through the book, if you don't understand a beat, you can reference that. The second example I have here is Rick Latham's uh, Advanced Funk Studies. You can see he has a whole page here at the beginning where he's showing, oh, an open hi-hat is going to look like that. There's a general pattern, though, to all of these notation keys. Uh, Hi-hats are usually higher up with X's on the staff. Snare drums are in the middle, usually on treble clef C. Bass drums going to be lower than that, usually on treble clef F or something like that. So there's a society of percussionists, just like there are societies of psychologists and counselors and architects and things like that. There's a society, a group of people, of percussionists that finally said, let's standardize this notation. And so I'm going to use what they've set out as the standard notation. This is what it is here. And the next part of this video now, we're gonna, I'm going to go through and show you what each of these sound like on the various drums. And this will, should cover pretty much everything you're going to see in my videos. So this is the notation I'll use. And just recall that if you're using another method book, double check to see if they have a key or a legend at the beginning that's going to describe to you how they're notating it. But if not, you should probably just defer to what the Percussive Arts Society has set up as standardized notation for the drum set. Crash cymbal. Choked crash cymbal. Open hi-hat. Closed hi-hat. Ride. Bell of the ride. Tom one. Tom two, if I had one. Snare, cross stick. So your hand rests on the head of the snare drum, then leaving the butt of the stick there, you use the shoulder of the stick to strike and make that sound. Uh, some drummers prefer to flip their stick around because it has even a more clave-like sound. Depending on where you place the stick, it'll produce a different sound. Floor tom, kick one or the bass drum, kick two, you either have a second bass drum or you have a double bass pedal and so your left foot is kick two and it will also make a bass drum sound. Your hi-hat foot, hi-hat open, cowbell which I don't have with me right now but that's an attachment, I can attach it to my bass drum here, play that, a buzz roll or a buzz stroke. You do a bunch of those in succession. And then you do get a buzz, a sustained buzz roll. A rim shot, if you strike the head of the drum and it's low enough that the uh, body of the stick is going to hit the rim there, instead of just getting this sound, or this sound, you get both. It creates a very loud <laughs> effect. I use it a lot for solos and jazz and stuff like that, it's a useful stroke. A ghost note is just a softer note. So if you're playing a passage like this, you can hear these accents, but underneath that there's this constant 16th ghost note pattern. Ghost notes. 
Or another example would be something like this. You can hear not all of the snare drum strokes are in equal in volume. The softer ones are going to be notated ghost notes. And finally, let ring. Just hit it and don't mute it. Your homework for lesson number two. Nothing. This is a reference video, reference lesson. There is no homework. I mean, if you really want to, you can go Google drum beats and now use what you've learned to try to decipher which instruments would I play. Um, but I have no specific homework for you. This is a lesson where going forward, if you don't understand any of the drum beats or things like that because you can't read the, the notation, you should come back and watch this lesson. But you have no homework. So congratulations, you finished les lesson two. In the next lesson, lesson number three, I'll be talking about how to hold the drumsticks, a couple of the grips you can use, and also some ideas for technique. So check that out.